Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Missouri ACAC Virtual College Fair. You've got an exciting session today. Before we begin, we'll cover a few housekeeping items. Note first off that if you have questions, you can do so using the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also note that your mic and camera phone are off, so our presenters can't see or hear you. Be advised as well that there are additional sessions on the StriveScan website for those who have interest in this uh, topic. So go ahead and sign up for those at your earliest convenience. Lastly, note that the recording of this session is going to be available and posted on the StriveScan website at strivescan.com slash Missouri. With these items addressed, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from Iowa State University. Hello, everyone. I'm gonna start um, sharing my screen with you all. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Dakota. I'm a senior admissions counselor at Iowa State, and I am very excited to share a little bit with you tonight about what we have to offer you. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. We are located in the state of Iowa within the city of Ames. We're pretty centrally located within the state of Iowa itself. We're about 35 to 40 minutes north of Des Moines, which is the state of Iowa's capital. So um, lots of ways to get involved, both in the on-campus community, in the Ames community, as well as in Des Moines. We are about six hours from the St. Louis Metro and about three and a half from the KC Metro. So just to kind of give you um, a little bit of a frame of reference there with how far that we are located from y'all. So when you're considering schools, why should you be considering Iowa State? We are home to the first public veterinary school in the nation. So pre-vet is something that you're interested in. Iowa State could be a great place for you to start. Ames is consistently ranked as one of the best college towns in the US. And as an alum myself, it's very easy to see why that is. There is always something going on within the local community and on campus as well. We have top ranked programs in areas like engineering, and we have a 96% placement rate for our graduating students within six months, meaning that within six months of graduation, our students are either um, employed full time or are enrolled in a graduate or professional school program of their choice. We are also home to some of the largest career fairs in the nation, companies from all over the state of Iowa, as well as the US and even some internationally come to Ames to recruit Iowa State students because they're aware of the caliber of education they're receiving and the faculty that they're able to not only learn from in the classroom, but also conduct research alongside. We're a fairly large institution with a little over 31,000 students in our campus community. Um, our students are coming from all 50 states in the US as well as 100 different nations across the globe. So you are likely to meet someone coming from your own backyard in Missouri, but also from a completely different part of the world, which really kind of makes that Iowa State adventure a lot, um, a lot of fun getting to connect with other people from diverse backgrounds and cultures. All those numbers and information and statistics, statistics excuse me, come together to create that one amazing unique adventure that you have to um, create for yourself at Iowa State. At Iowa State, we have 100 majors for students to choose from. So if you know what you're looking to study, that's fantastic. On this list, you're gonna find everything from our areas like engineering, which again are our top ranked programs, business, genetics, dietetics, and the list goes on and on. So um, if you know what you wanna study, that's great. If you're still exploring, that's also great as well. Um, I'm confident that we will be able to find something for you on this list that will help you, um, you know, reach your long-term goals of your dream career, or your dream job. On your screen right now are admissions course requirements. So um, I like to point out the word minimum on the screen, especially to our juniors that are attending tonight. Um, we definitely encourage you to obviously meet the minimum to be considered for admission, but don't hesitate to um, challenge and push yourself in that senior year of high school in terms of the courses you're taking. Um, if you're looking for a major within our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences or Engineering, you will want to make a note of the two additional requirements. So Liberal Arts and Sciences expects three years of social studies instead of two. And the College of Engineering and Liberal Arts and Sciences expect their students to come in with two years of a single foreign language. Uh, so definitely want to keep that in mind as you are browsing majors and considering what you might like to study at Iowa State. At Iowa State, we utilize something called the Regent Admission Index or RAI score. One important thing to note about admission for fall 21 for those of you that are seniors or fall 22 for those of you that are juniors, we are test optional. So this means that students can apply to be considered for admission and scholarships at Iowa State without taking or submitting ACT, SAT test scores. So if you were able to test or are able to test and choose to apply with that, we'll utilize the formula that's on your screen that takes in your ACT score, your high school GPA, and your core courses that you've taken into that formula that you see. 
And if you score a 245 or higher, you're automatically admitted to Iowa State without any questions. If you choose to apply without taking um, or submitting test scores, uh, you'll wanna focus on the red box on the screen. We're gonna put a higher emphasis on your GPA, the core courses that you've taken um, and do an individualized academic review based on the information that you provide. The application process is pretty straightforward. You apply on our website, there's a $40 fee to apply. You self-report all of your information throughout that process and most students have an immediate admissions decision when they apply. You're able to then explore scholarships that we have available from the Office of Admissions as well as across the institution. And we won't need anything official in terms of transcripts until after you graduate. The Cyclone Advantage Planning Program is great for juniors to start researching Iowa State and finding out um, what their likelihood of admission will be. We have a variety of automatic admissions awards available to students at Iowa State from our office, as well as a variety of scholarship opportunities from across the institution in terms of undergraduate colleges, major-based, identity-based awards um, that students will utilize our one-app scholarship portal. Um, and those are additional opportunities in additional, addition to your federal aid that you may qualify for um, by filling out the FAFSA. What's next for juniors and seniors are able to participate in both virtual and in-person campus visits. Um, seniors, you're definitely wanna, gonna, gonna wanna be applying for admission at this point if you haven't yet. Make sure you're getting us your FAFSA information and um, then accepting the offer of admission. Then we move into housing and orientation, um, things like that as well for you all. What's on your screen right now is my contact information. Please feel free to make a note of this. I'll also be putting some more information in the chat for you all. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Ron to our next our presenter next from, from the University, University of Minnesota. Minnesota. Great, thank you. I'll share my screen real quick here. My name is Allie Osterheis. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers, and I'm super excited to tell you a little bit about the University of Minnesota Twin Cities tonight. I am the regional admissions counselor. I'm actually based in Minneapolis, but I work with students in Kansas and Missouri. And just speaking about location, uh, we are about six hour drive from the Kansas City metro area and about eight hours from the St. Louis area. So it is definitely a drivable campus uh, within a day. And just to kind of set the stage about the University of Minnesota in general, we are in the Big Ten Academic Conference, which is primarily uh, universities in the Midwest and throughout the East Coast as well. Um, we are all, most of us are large public research universities. The University of Minnesota is no exception. We have around 52,000 students overall, and we are located in the Twin Cities metro area, which encompasses Minneapolis and St. Paul. So you don't just have one city to explore as a student, you have two metro areas to take advantage of as a University of Minnesota Twin Cities student. So I'm going to talk about some of the key things to expect from your experience as a Golden Gopher. One is academics. This is likely going to be one of the main driving factors in your college decision. We offer what I call both a breadth and a depth in the academic experience. In terms of breadth, we offer many different majors and programs. So if you have multiple interests or you don't know exactly what you want to study at this point in time, you, the University of Minnesota is gonna be a really great fit for you. We actually have a center for academic planning and exploration with career coaches who can talk through that decision of what major is going to be the best and what your passion really is. So we have 150 majors, 135 minors to choose from, and then also about 200 graduate and professional programs. As the flagship university, the largest university in the state of Minnesota, we do have your core professional programs on campus as well, such as our vet school, medical school, dentistry, pharmacy, and our lab, our law school as well. Um, so your golden gopher journey can continue on uh, for more than just your four-year undergraduate career. We are also really committed to, as a, a Research One University, the creation of new knowledge in addition to what you would expect teaching you knowledge in your college experience. So uh, undergraduate students have ample opportunities to get involved in research as well. On the flip side, you want to have that sense of community. Even in a large university, our University of Minnesota does an incredible job of making sure that you find your place on campus where you are welcomed and supported in your academic pursuits. So instead of applying generally to the University of Minnesota, you will actually apply directly to one of our freshman admitting colleges. Some of our uh, strong programs include our School of Nursing, our College of Science and Engineering, as well as our Carlson School of Management, which is our business school. 
school. And you can see as well, for our size, we have a really, really solid student to faculty ratio, lots of opportunities to really get that, you know, group work um, and close knit academic experience. Beyond the classroom, you're going to do a lot of your learning that in college outside of the classroom as well. So as a large campus, we've got a lot going on. We have about a thousand student groups right now, um, including a program for students coming from out of state that really orients you to Minnesotan culture. So the Minnesota State Fair, going apple picking, going ice skating, things like that. It's called At Home in Minnesota. Beyond that, we have one of the largest learning abroad programs in the country with over 200 different programs to choose from in about 70 countries currently. Um, and beyond campus, of course, we have this location. This is what really, I think, sets us apart in terms of large public research universities. We are located in the heart of the Twin Cities and we have really great public transportation running right through our campus. So you can jump on the light rail train, which goes from downtown Minneapolis to downtown St. Paul, right on our campus and get to a concert, a football game, your internship, a volunteer experience, job interview, whatever it is uh, within minutes. And we're also directly connected to the MSP International Airport. So getting in and out of campus is quite uh, convenient as well. In terms of our application, we do have our application on two different platforms, our own Golden, Golden Gopher application, that's our institutional app, as well as the common apps. You can find us there. We use a self-reported academic record instead of having us or having you submit your, um, your official high school transcript to us. So that's something to keep in mind. And we are test optional for fall 2022. So for you juniors in the room, just know that you do not have to submit a test score and you will still receive full consideration, not only for admissions, but also automatic holistic review for scholarships as well as our honors program. We do have two deadlines throughout the year. Our first is on November 1st. That's our early action deadline. If you're interested in nursing, keep in mind that our nursing application is due by that first deadline. And then we also have our regular deadline on January 1st. The only difference between our two application deadlines is when you're guaranteed to hear a decision. So if you apply by November, you'll hear back a little bit earlier, but you will have full consideration for honors, scholarships, and then admission to one of those eight freshman admitting colleges as well. And with that, uh, I will wrap up. I wanna say thank you so much uh, for being here tonight to learn a little bit more. And uh, I would love to stay in touch. I'll put my contact information in the chat and um, I will pass it um, to our next presenter. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. We're ready for the representative from Indian Hills Community College. Abby, if you're talking, I think you're on mute still. If you wanna just, uh, there we go. Okay, sorry everyone. My name is Abby, I'm from Indian Hills Community College. Um, so first, there we go. Um, so first I just wanna start by talking about some things that are in, unique to Indian Hills. Um, so we have a four day academic week, which means that our courses are Monday through Thursday and all of our students, staff and faculty have Friday, Saturday and Sunday off. Um, we do have small class sizes. So our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. We have over um, 70 programs on campus and over 40 clubs and organizations. And we also have five on campus housing options for students. And then we have a very nice academic success center that is a free resource for students. So we have um, three different divisions at Indian Hills. Um, so the first is arts and sciences. The second is our advanced technologies. And then our third is our health sciences division. Um, so starting with our arts and sciences, this is what a lot of our students choose to do. So this is where you can receive your just general education courses um, and receive your associate of arts or your associate of science degree. Um, so then the bottom of this slide just shows um, the different schools that our students choose to transfer to, but um, our credits transfer to um, a number of different um, colleges and universities if you are looking to transfer after Indian Hills. 
So then we have our advanced technologies division. And so this is our more hands-on program. So this is our animal science, our precision farming, um, landscape and turf grass. We also have um, lasers and robotics, um, which is a really cool program for our students to choose. Um, so students in our advanced technologies programs can receive certificates, diplomas, or their associate of applied science degree. So depending on how long you're wanting to stay in school, um, you can choose a number of different options there. And then for our third division, we have our health science program. So these are going to be your programs in our um, healthcare profession. So um, nursing, rad tech, phlebotomy, um, physical therapy assistant, and then a number of other different options. Um, so same thing with our advanced technologies program, students can receive certificates, diplomas, or their associate of applied science degrees. Um, with our health sciences programs, we do have additional screening. Um, so students would need to turn in their um, high school transcripts. They would need to take their ACT or Accuplacer test um, and also have a certain GPA to get into our health science programs. Um, so this slide just shows um, some, or I guess the difference between price. Um, so as you can see, we have one of the lowest tuition rates in Iowa. So this kind of compares um, between a four year um, public um, school and then a private school as well. Um, so as I just said, we have one of the lowest tuition rates in Iowa. Um, this slide also shows our school code. So um, if students are wanting to come to Indian Hills, you can jot this number down and attach that to your FAFSA application. Um, and then we also have what's called the EOC or our Educational Opportunity Center. And this is a resource that students can utilize to get help completing their FAFSA application for free. And that's regardless of what school you're going to. So that's really nice for students in this area to utilize. So we do have three different um, scholarship um, opportunities for our students here at Indian Hills. So the first one is our foundation scholarship. And so we award over $1.5 million a year to our students at Indian Hills. So the nice thing about our foundation scholarship is that it is one application. So students aren't trying to figure out what scholarships they're eligible for through our foundation. Um, then we have our Tom Arnold Scholarship. So um, as you can see, our deadline for this has already passed, um, but this is something to keep in mind for juniors out there um, or um, next year if you're going to be a second year student with us. So um, Tom Arnold is a famous actor. He asks a question every year. So this year it's how has COVID-19 impacted you in a positive way? And then he chooses two students to receive a full ride um, tuition scholarship for that year. So really great opportunity for students who are coming to Indian Hills. And then we have our club scholarships. So students can earn a between a $600 and a $1,200 scholarship for being an active member in one of our 40 um, clubs or organizations that we have on campus. Um, so I did talk earlier about um, our five on campus housing options. Um, so living on campus is a great way to meet new friends and maybe um, go outside of your comfort zone. Um, we do have double single and apartment style rooms for students and all of our residence halls include um, air conditioning in the summer since a lot of our students do go through their summer or go through the summer their first year. Um, and then we also have free Wi Fi cable and free laundry facilities for students as well. Um, so this slide here is just a checklist um, that students can look at and kind of see where they're at in the admissions process. Um, but any of our admissions reps are happy to go through this with students, um, no matter where they're at in the process. And then lastly, our um, we have our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So you can check out what's going on on our campus. So thank you guys. Abby, thanks so much. We're on to our next presenter from the University of Northern Iowa. All right. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Beto Castrejon. I see him, his pronouns. And I'm your admissions counselor for the University of Northern Iowa. So some information about you and I, about us. Um, we're a medium-sized public institution located in Cedar Falls, Iowa, which is where the Pantherhead is at in the state of Iowa. So it's about a four and a half hour drive from the Kansas City, Missouri area. Um, now with that, um, us being a public institution, us being a medium sized institution, we're able to offer 
um, you know, that public university feel while also being it, making it more tailored to you and to what you're looking for as a student um, here on UNI's campus. Here at UNI, we have over 90 majors, 25 pre-professional programs, 87 minors and emphasis areas, and then the average classroom size is 29 students. Um, so really a lot of conversation happening in the classroom. You're able to ask a lot of questions and really get a, a good feel for, for what it's like after you graduate from UNI and enter that workforce um, field. Um, you're able to gain a lot of hands-on experience, skills and abil abilities that will be very important um, once you do start that one job. Um, so again, you know, really tailoring it to you as a UNI student, um, but still offering that public institution feel. We have over 260 organizations to get involved in. So quite a wide array of different things to build on your leadership skills, gain uh, new perspectives, but then also be able to build your support system here on UNI's campus. Um, we are a division one school and all of our athletic events that take place at UNI are free to our UNI students. Um, you just scan your UNID and you're able to get into the, the homecoming football game or the basketball games. Um, also intramural sports available for our, our students here. And then also our Gallagher Blue Dome Performing Arts Center where different theater performances, different musical groups perform. And we do offer two free tickets per semester to all of our UNI students to attend any of those musical groups or performances that take place in Gallagher. Now our admissions process, we go by the Regents Admissions Index. So it, the application for UNI, it will ask you for your ACT uh, score, your GPA, and then also the number of years of high school courses in the core subject areas. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we are test optional for the incoming fall of 2021 and then also for the fall of 2022. Um, so that is optional, you're not required um, to submit a test score, an ACT test score, or SAT test score for admission into UNI. Um, our tuition and fees for out-of-state students, so for students in Missouri, um, would be 19480 and then room and board 9160 for a total direct cost of 28640 Now our scholarships, we have a, a wide array of different scholarships available for out-of-state students. Um, all out-of-state students, upon being admitted into the University of Northern Iowa, will receive a $20,000 scholarship um, for the four years that they're at UNI. There's no ACT or SAT requirement. There's no GPA requirement. Um, it's once um, being in, once you're uh, admitted into UNI, you would receive this. We also have the additional advantage award. Um, 8,000, 4,000, and then that would have a GPA and ACT requirement with it. The, all, the other out-of-state scholarship is um, only a GPA requirement, the Panther Success Award. Again, only a GPA requirement, not having an ACT or SAT requirement um, to it. Um, this would be um, either or from the other additional advantage award. Um, so it'd be either that one or the Panther Success Award, depending on your situation uh, once you're applying to UNI. The other out-of-state scholarship that we have um, for students upon being admitted and meeting the requirements is the United Scholarship. And this is also only a GPA requirement. And it's for our students who identify under an underrepresented population or who have participated in a TRIO or AVID program. And then the out-of-state Legacy Scholar Award. So if you have a parent, a grandparent, or a sibling who graduated from UNI, or you have a sibling who's currently enrolled at UNI, you would also be eligible for this scholarship right here. And then our UNI scholarship application, it's um, you know, one form that students complete to then be entered into campus-wide scholarships. So scholarships in different departments, in different areas, different programs across campus. So really convenient uh, since it's only one form that you have to complete for those other scholarships. And then last, um, lastly, um, like always, we're here to help. So if you have any questions, um, you can email us right here at admissions at uni.edu. Um, this QR code will also um, take you to our page where you're able to submit information about you and we can start sending you information. Um, well, thank you all so much. Thank you. We're on to our next university, Michigan State University.
Good evening. Thank you all very much for joining us for this evening's presentation or maybe watching this on YouTube later. We definitely appreciate you taking some time out to learn about this great variety of schools that is joining us this evening. I am going to go ahead and share my screen here, just having a quick technical difficulty here. You would think by now we would be experts in using Zoom all the time, but not always. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, again, reminder to use the Q&A. Unfortunately, we can't see and hear you, but you certainly can share questions with us for any of the schools in the Q&A. And we would love to hear from you and answer your questions there as well. So my name is Steve Landgraf again. I am a regional admissions counselor for Michigan State University. I'm actually based in Chicago, but I work with most of our students from Illinois, as well as Missouri, Kansas, and Arkansas. So my contact email is on this slide as well. Um, and I'm actually from right outside of St. Louis myself. So always great to connect with some of our students in the Missouri area. So I will go ahead and move on to just some basics about Michigan State. Obviously, this is really brief. We only have six minutes per school. So I'll just try to hit some of the basics, the, the where, the who, the what, the how, kind of the basic questions. So this is more of just an introduction. And hopefully, you'll follow up with the schools that you most connect with through these presentations as well. So where is Michigan State University? When I was growing up, I didn't really know myself. I had never been to Michigan when I was growing up in the St. Louis area. So we are in East Lansing, Michigan, right outside the state capital capital of Lansing. We're about a 90 minute drive from Detroit, Michigan, and about a three and a half hour drive from Chicago. But if you're coming from Missouri, it's more like about a seven and a half hour drive from St. Louis, or if you want a really little bit longer drive, 10 and a half hour drive from Kansas City. So still doable. Certainly have students from the Missouri area who would definitely take advantage of flying too. So there is an airport in Lansing, but a more major airport in Detroit. And there's a shuttle that goes between Detroit to East Lansing called the Michigan Fly. So few beautiful photos of our campus in East Lansing, Michigan. It is a very large campus. We are one of the largest schools in the United States, one of the largest campuses, about 5,300 acres at our campus in East Lansing, Michigan. It is completely contained to, you know, some campuses kind of blend in with the city, but ours is more of a, a contained campus in East Lansing. And then the state capital of Lansing, again, is just a few minutes away. So who are we? as Michigan State University. Well, like I said, we're a pretty big school, uh, about the eighth largest college in the United States, all one campus as well. We've got almost 50,000 students and about 39,000 undergraduate students who are working on that bachelor's degree, like some of the other schools you've already heard from this evening. Very diverse school too. Uh, we actually get students from all 50 states and about 140 different countries. Uh, roughly about 30% of our students are from outside the state of Michigan, whether they're domestic, or international students. Um, again, very big place, but certainly have a reasonable student to faculty ratio as well. It's actually only a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. And about 84% of your classes at Michigan State actually have 50 students or fewer. So what are some of the things you can do at Michigan State? Obviously, that's a really broad question about the opportunities we have. We have 17 different degree granting academic colleges. That includes three medical schools, our College of Human Medicine, our College of osteopathic medicine, and we have the only college of veterinary medicine in the state of Michigan as well. Uh, we have a law school at Michigan State too, but in terms of the undergraduate programs, we have most things that you might be considering studying, whether it's something under our Eli Broad College of Business or our College of Engineering, our College of Education. We even have three residential colleges that are intentionally smaller living learning communities. Sometimes students are really surprised that a large school like Michigan State would have something like that um, in terms of living learning community opportunities as well. So lots of other things that you can do outside the classroom, even beyond your major. Um, some of the other schools highlighted things like study abroad. We're well known for that, as well as entrepreneurship and innovation. That's a minor that we encourage a lot of students to take advantage of. We have a fantastic honors college. We are a Big Ten university as well, so obviously have Big Ten athletics, but intramurals, club sports as well, and uh, about 900 different clubs and organizations that we have. But study abroad is certainly one of my favorite ones to talk about. Um, we do offer a study abroad scholarship to all of our out-of-state students too, and we go to about 275 different programs across around 70 countries, and we actually go to all seven continents as well. So lots of things to take advantage of in your experience at Michigan State. So 
how do you become a Michigan State student? If you're a senior and you're watching this right now, we will continue to accept applications up until May 1st. If you're a junior or sophomore, you definitely want to target November 1st. That's an early action date uh, or priority date for a lot of schools, and Michigan State is certainly like that too. We encourage especially all of our out-of-state students to apply by November 1, so you get priority consideration for scholarships. You can apply through our website as well as the Common App and the Coalition application as well. We are test optional for fall of 2021 and we will be test optional for the next five years as well. So if you're a junior or sophomore watching this as well, you don't have to worry about sending us a test score if you don't want to. You will be considered for the same scholarships, same eligibility for honors college, same eligibility for admissions, whether you send us a test score or not. We do require an official high school transcript as well. And then there is a $65 application fee unless you qualify for a fee waiver. Just to show a quick glance here about some of our out-of-state scholarships, these are just some of the awards you might be considered for. Again, whether you send us a test score or not, you're still going to be considered for them. This particular chart shows it in relation to test scores and grades, but these are our basic admission scholarships. They go from five to 15,000 per year, and then if you get invited to our Honors College, they're going to give you an additional five or 13,000, and you even have the opportunity to test for full tuition and full ride awards too. So unfortunately, we aren't doing official campus visits right now, but we certainly hope to resume those soon. Stay tuned to our admissions website to look for visit information of when we're able to start offering public tours again. And thank you again for joining us and go green. Thank you. Big kudos to all our presenters. We have a couple questions here. We'll go through in a round robin format. Um, so we'll start at the top. First question is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So find representative from Iowa State, please weigh in. Yeah, I would say my biggest piece of advice, and I think a lot of my colleagues on the call too would echo this, um, take advantage of your admissions counselor. Uh, we are here to help you, help your family navigate the admissions process for our respective institutions. We have a lot of information that we can share and a lot of um, information that will help Okay, we'll move on to our next representative from the University of Minnesota. Oh, hi, yeah, I, I would say some of my best advice is don't be afraid to talk to current students as well. I know we as admissions counselors are definitely here to help you navigate this entire process, help your whole family navigate it, but truly some of the best resources for information about what the experience on campus is truly like our current students who are living the experience day to day right now. So I know a lot of universities have virtual ways to connect with students. So I'd have you take advantage of those. Thank you. Up next, Indian Hills Community College. Yeah, I would just say to ask as many questions as you can, because sometimes this process can be a lot. Um, and so just never hesitate to reach out, ask questions. Um, like Iowa State said, you know, utilize your admissions reps. That is really, truly what we are here for. So um, I would also say like visit campus as well and get a feel for, you know, where you're going to be spending your time too. Up next, University of Northern Iowa. Yeah, I would really echo what, what everybody's been saying, you know, ask a lot of questions, um, you know, get to know the, the campus, get to know the professors, current students, and just ask questions. Um, you know, visiting campus is also a really great way, whether it's virtually or in person, um, to better know what the university is like. Um, so those, those would probably be my advice. Last but not least, Michigan State. I would just say to keep your options open. I think a lot of times students go in uh, and they have a really strong opinion maybe about what type of school they want or what they want to major in. And it's really good to keep your options open. Check out a variety of different types of schools. Know that statistically, statistically a lot of students do change your major. So don't choose a school probably just for your major, just especially if you're a sophomore, junior, keep an open mind as some of the other folks said, ask a lot of questions and just keep your options open as you're exploring schools. Thank you. We've got one more question. We'll ask the group facilitators. If you want, just be ready with your answer. I won't transition. Next question would be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Starting with Iowa State. 
Yeah, Iowa State, I think my, my favorite tradition, both as an alum, myself getting to experience it, um, would definitely be our homecoming week activities. So on the Friday night of homecoming week, right under our very large clock tower, the Camp Neal, um, there are fireworks, the marking band comes out and plays, and it is another Iowa State tradition that you're not a true Iowa Stater until you have kissed your significant other, your partner under the campanile as it strikes midnight. And that's when mass campanileing happens um, across campus right under the campanile. So that's a lot of fun, a lot of activity. I would say uh, from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, my favorite campus tradition is called Paint the Bridge Day. It's a day every fall semester where our student groups have the opportunity to paint a panel on the bridge covering uh, that goes across the Mississippi River, which our, our campus spans both the east and the west sides of the Mississippi. And there's a bridge covering because it does get cold in the winter in Minnesota. So when you're walking across the bridge, it's really nice to have that. Um, but on Paint the Bridge Day, each group has the opportunity to paint their own panel. So when you're walking across campus, especially if you're a new student, if you're looking for ways to get involved, you just walk across that bridge, see the wide array and variety and diversity of student groups that we have represented across our campus. So I will say that's my favorite tradition. Yeah, I would say that um, my favorite is um, we have what's called Hills Fest. So students can come to campus and um, apply, they can get help with their FAFSA, register for classes, just kind of um, check off the things on our admissions checklist. But we also do a 5K in the community. Um, we have inflatables, we have food trucks that come, we've done a drive-in movie theater um, in the past. So a lot of just different things happening and it's a great way for students to get on campus and kind of feel what it's gonna be like for um, future events while they're here. My favorite tradition would probably be um, the U, U, um, UNI homecoming parade. Um, it, you know, it's really fun always just to see the, the student organizations. Um, they get to decorate a golf cart and then just ride around uh, campus uh, during the parade. So that's probably my, my favorite tradition, just getting to see that and seeing the different decorations for the, the golf carts from student organizations. So we just ended the NCAA tournament. Michigan State is definitely really well known for college basketball. We actually have the second longest continuous streak of uh, NCAA tournament appearances at 23 and the longest streak for current head coach with coach Tom Izzo. So a uh, big basketball school. And every year we do this thing called the Izzo camp out, which is kind of an overnight camp out outside with like free food and lots of events. And that's kind of a kickoff to the basketball season and the best way to make sure you get like good basketball tickets as a current student. So big basketball school, go green. Our last question, give an interesting fun fact about your school. Iowa State, lead us off, please. Yes. Well, if you have ever enjoyed a delicious Rice Krispie treat, you have an Iowa State alum to thank for that. An Iowa State alum uh, created the Rice Krispie treat, and we are also home to the first digital computer. Like Iowa State, uh, I'm going to name some inventions from the University of Minnesota. Um, the Honeycrisp apple was developed on our campus, as well as the retractable seatbelt and the pacemaker. Um, we have connections with uh, Medtronic in the Twin Cities. It's one of the large companies in, in our backyard and uh, work pretty, pretty frequently with companies in the, the biomedical devices area. So I think that's a, a cool fact about our region and our school. Um, yeah, so I mentioned this um, during my presentation, but we do have four day academic weeks. So our classes run Monday through Thursday with Fridays off, which is really nice for staff, but also for students. Um, and we also have um, terms instead of semesters. So our courses are um, 12 weeks. So that's really nice. And it's um, a nice fun pace for students um, who are taking classes here. Um, we collaborated with Herberts and Gerberts to create a, a special UNI sandwich. It's called the UNI uh, Campanile, so it's available on our campus as well. Um, so that's just, you know, a little fun fact, a uh, nice sandwich as well. So Michigan State started as an agriculture school way back in 1855, still big program for us. So we have Michigan State cows and have lots of agriculture programs. And with that comes our dairy store. So a lot of people know the Michigan State Dairy Store. It is unfortunately currently closed because of everything with the pandemic. But uh, 
Hopefully it will reopen soon. And that is a big highlight of any visit to Michigan State is to go to the MSU Dairy Store. Very good. Presenters, thanks so much for all your information today, your enthusiasm. We thank you for joining today's fair. I know there's a quick survey available. So anyone with interest in that, please go ahead and fill that out. Also know we have additional sessions tomorrow for this fair. So if you have interest, go to the StriveScan website and sign up for those. Lastly, the recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com slash Missouri. Thanks again to our presenters and hope everybody has a great day.